I'd love to say, oh, Matt and me did all our own driving. That would sound good, <laughs> wouldn't it? But I had to keep reminding myself, I'm acting as though I know what I'm doing. I'm not really doing it. And we had some of the best racers and right. drivers in yeah. the world. If we had been doing the driving, those racing sequences would not have been nearly as exciting <laughs> or exciting at all. Perfect lap. You see it? I think so. It's about friendship. It's about people who work together and the kind of bonds you make making things together. The way I connected it with it was not really through racing, but was that I felt something similar to what we feel making movies. Every movie is live or die. Every movie feels like you'll be destroyed if it doesn't work. Every movie is a fight for the money. We're always fighting and selling for the space to create. Mm. And they're very contradictory. And I, f I found that so fascinating in this world of sport that there's something so pure, like racing and engineering, and then something so compromised as marketing. As the director identified with Shelby, it's like he has to play both sides. Mm. He has to be able to perform for the suits, and he has to be able to perform and lead his men on the field. It's about individual versus corporation. It's about these big concepts of integrity, of your word, of, of, of fighting against the system. I mean, there's so many different things going on. It's about love, it's about brotherhood. It's a very big story that also deals with this extraordinary thing of the American corporate economy and building and, you know, I, all those different things all happening at the same time. Do you think you can beat Ferrari? I, I had never heard of the story before and I hadn't even heard of the race Le Mans and when I got the script, the first thing that I was like, wait, there's a race that lasts 24 hours. <laughs> like that in itself is crazy and you just think, I go to the, a go-kart track and I race for five minutes and I, my hands are like sore and I'm out of breath. I knew Shelby was, yeah. just from my dad pointing out every time he saw an AC Cobra, oh, it's an AC Cobra, Christian, look at that. And the Le Mans cars, just how incredible they look, that was it. And we'd all heard of Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. heard of that. And <laughs> Ford. To win the 24 hours of Le Mans, what's it take? Well, it takes something money can't buy. Money can buy speed. It was a real joy for me to play somebody whose strength came from his integrity and his uh, sense of loyalty and his uh, inventiveness and his ethics. I got to meet with Peter, which was really amazing. And he was so great and so generous with his time. And, you know, he talked to me about his mom and his dad and sort of their relationship. And Molly had written an article for Drive magazine talking about the first date that her and Miles went on. It was incredible. He showed up in a vintage car that broke down. She was 16 years old, like they got lost. It was, it was a crazy story, but definitely the story that we tell of their family is a dramatization that's probably very different to their real family dynamics, but you want him to see the film and to, I guess, feel something of their essence there and to feel proud of it. I know Christian met him as well. Yeah, had a wonderful friend. time with uh, Peter, hearing about the real stories and whatnot. Within racist circles, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a god. Right. And so there's actually a lot of information on him, lots of books. This isn't the first time Ford Motors has gone to war. We know how to do more than push paper. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. The truth of the character was in the script. I don't know how closely it hews to the real guy, but I do know that the kernel of the actual story was that he felt Ferrari had made him look foolish. And uh, so it, it speaks to the idea that the guy was prideful and maybe insecure that he felt the need to try to beat Ferrari at his game. <laughs> it was great fun, but really challenging for Matt and, and me. We, it was, the nerve wracking part was, uh, the claustrophobia. You get in the car, you're about 18 inches off the ground, you can't extend your legs, I'm in a full suit, makeup, you can't open the door because the camera's there. The roof of the car is right there. 
you're strapped into the seat, and then Matt gets in and shuts the door. It's like, well, you're in here now for a couple of hours. And Matt even kind of looked at me and said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. And then when they put the camera on the other side and I got in and shut the door, I saw the look in his eyes like, oh man, <laughs> this isn't fun. The real GT40s that have survived from that era are $25 million cars. They're all in museums. You have to work with replicas. Those little Cobras, those, those ones, they're so they light. Fast, yeah. they're, they're really fast. I was surprised at how hard it was to keep the back wheels on the Wow. On the they do like to slide. They like, yeah. They? They yeah. Like, and it, but it's predictable. It's a predictable slide. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It's a lot yeah. of fun. We really focused on trying to put you in the point of view of the drivers. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the critical thing for me was that I didn't want to just do a lot of panning shots of cars going by. You know, I wanted us to get inside. I didn't want it to look like what you'd see on a sports telecast. But I also think the reason you get so excited is do more to these guys' work than, than some of the stunt work we're doing, which is just that you believe and know these characters. So there's more at stake for you than just the blue car and the red car. You cast people with a rapport with each other. You don't know that's gonna happen. You don't understand it's gonna happen, but these are both really nice guys and I had a feeling they'd get along. And it wasn't just the rapport between the two of them, but the whole group, you know, whether it's Ken's family and Katrina and Noah, or it's the rest of the pit crew. You want everyone to kind of find connections with each other. The first day we did this great scene in the garage you were there playing yeah. with some uh, yeah. Skelectrix. So that, that was my highlight of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jim had arranged that we did a walkthrough of the house and, and you know, spent a little bit of time sort of getting a feel for the places that we were gonna shoot before we went there. It just felt so easy, that relationship from day one, and it was just fun. Ken's a puppy dog. Matt did some serious neck snapping on his own just to make sell that punch that I thought was, if I had done a few more takes, he would have started to get pissed. I would have started grumbling probably. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take much. <laughs> the key to that, that fight scene was trying to keep a straight face because it was the most fun. Nobody won the fight. It's like fighting with your brother. Like, you don't really want to hurt each other. You know, I go for the can at one point, and then it's like, no, that could hurt him. I'll take the, the Wonder Bread and hit him with that. I think people love sports movies because they redefine our lives down to a singular goal. Every character has an investment in a moment. It can be in the team winning, it can be in the team losing, it can be trying to win, it can be hoping they make it to the end, it can be whatever agenda they have. It is really nice to having a defining goal, something as artificial and as beautiful as a finish line does that because it's suddenly the clock, the timing of the movie, and you know, all the characters' hopes and dreams all rest on this singular point in space.